Hello, my name is Micah Watson and I'm a composer and music producer. Welcome to lesson 3 of the video tutorial series Mastering Ableton Live. Today I'll be teaching you how to record new clips in this part 2 series of chapter 4 of the manual. Audio tracks and MIDI tracks can both record their input signal and thereby create new clips. Recording is enabled on a track by pressing its arm button, which you can find over here. You can also select multiple tracks and then hit arm to arm all those tracks at once. You can do that by either shift clicking over a bunch of tracks or command clicking individual tracks that you want to arm. If you haven't selected all the tracks, you can also arm multiple tracks by command clicking the various arm buttons on the various tracks. If you create a new track and you want it to automatically be armed, you can enable the exclusive arm option which is located in the record preferences. Now let's look at the control bars arrangement record button. This bar over here is called the control bar and if this button, the arrangement record button is on, then every armed track records its input signal into the arrangement. Every take yields a new clip per track. It's also possible to record into session view slots on the fly. This technique is very useful for musicians that like to jam and improvise because session recordings does not require you to stop the music. Clicking the session record button, which is this little circle next to this new button, records a new clip in the selected session scene in all the armed tracks. If you click the session record button again, it defines the end of the recording and launches the newly recorded clips. Because these actions are subjected to real-time launch quantization, the resulting clips can be automatically cut to the beat. Quantization in music production is when you shift MIDI notes or audio tracks to line up with the beat. This will ensure that everything will always be perfectly in time. Now that has its advantages, but if you're trying to get something to not sound robotic and electronic, it could also be a disadvantage, so just be careful. But in this setting, launch quantization is extremely useful to jam and make music on the fly using clips. You can change the default minimum length of each clip that you record by navigating your mouse to the left and changing the number of beats or bars that you would like it to have. When you're trying to create great drum patterns, then using the session recording in conjunction with overdubbing and record quantization is the method of choice. In this way, you'd be programming drum patterns by successively adding notes to the pattern while it plays in a loop. This means you can start with just the bass beat and build it up from there, adding complexity and interest to your clip. To do this you don't even need any expensive software. You can literally use your MIDI keyboard or even your computer or laptop keyboard. Doing that on a MIDI track with Live's Impulse Percussion Instrument or another percussion instrument will enable you to create some really cool drum loops. I strongly suggest that you practice and learn all these various different record controls. You will only be able to use them effectively if you thoroughly understand the difference between session view, arrangement view, how they interact with each other, how to arm and disarm tracks, and how to navigate the back to arrangement button, whether it's for your full set or just for an individual track. Practice these things and get comfortable, because if you are planning on jamming or doing live performance, it'll need to be drilled into your muscle memory. That's it for recording clips and session and arrangement view. In my next tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to make automation and clip envelopes and how to use key remote to map various parameters to the different keys that you have at your disposal. Thanks for watching and have fun.